Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are looking at the NFL and NBA prize picks props for Sunday, January the 15th. Have a six pick flex for each sport today. I'm going to combine them into one video with the sports starting in a couple of hours. So let's go ahead and get started. See if we can do a little better than yesterday, where didn't have a ton of success when three and three on the NFL video and the NBA fell, uh, I believe, two and four. So hopefully today we get a more success and can at least go five and one. If not, perfect 6-0 would be nice to cap off uh, the week. First prop we're looking at, we'll do football video first, is you're taking the over of receiving yards on T. Higgins. He's at 61 and a half. Uh, I do love the the Bengals to just pile up the points here against a, a Ravens team missing. Lamar Jackson once again. Higgins has played really well. I mean, Burrow's been on a tear over his last seven weeks or so. He's played, he's had some really good games. You know, missed some time earlier in the season with some uh, injury, concussion protocol, stuff like that. But in the games that he plays, typically will be targeted second most, usually right behind Jamar Chase. Uh, the Ravens' defense is it's not terrible, but it's in Cincinnati. The Bengals are favored by 8.5. feel like they're just going to be too much for this uh, Ravens' defense to handle. So... Last week, they played against the Ravens. He had just had one catch for seven yards. And then the last time he played them, uh, he didn't have any stats on October of 2022. I believe he probably left the game early or um, not sure what happened there. But game before that, he had 12 catches, 194 yards. He had seven catches, 62 yards previous game. And then his first ever game against the Ravens went four for 62. So a couple of them you just cleared by one yard, but... Expect Joe Burrow to pile up the yardage against his defense still, and I like the over on him. Another over that I'm looking at is Joe Mixon, over 24.5 receiving yards. He's been typically well over this number for a majority of the season. He gets some easy catches out of the backfield, ones that some small short screen passes that he can get a lot of uh, yards after the catch and you know make some guys miss and rack up some easy yardage that way. If you look at his game log, he had 41. He had f also, the targets are typically there, five-plus targets. Last week, he had five. Um, against uh, the Patriots, he had nine. Against the Bucs, he had six. The yardage there for most of these weeks, 41. Uh, he had 43 against the, the Patriots. As you see, if you go behind or past the Pittsburgh game, he cleared it against the Panthers, cleared it against the, the Browns, cleared it against the, the Falcons. Uh, so if we go from October of October 23rd and forward, uh, Mixon's played nine games since that span, and he's cleared it in seven of the nine. And against the Ravens, we saw what he did last week, uh, putting up 41 on five targets. They're going to have their best players out there for a the majority of the snaps. You know, P. Ryan can get some third down work as well, but Mixon might see some more snaps, I'd say, today. Those are two props I like on the Bengals' side. Uh, going over to the Giants side, you know, they've been banged up at wide receiver all year. They're looking for people to step up, and one guy that has stepped up nicely has been Richie James. Uh, he's had some big weeks last week. No, None of these guys played against Philly, so um, you don't have to factor that in. He had 76-90 the previous two weeks against Minnesota. He put up 90 going up against them once again. The Seems like the Giants could definitely pull off an upset today, or at least... Be right in this game. I mean, they just played a few weeks ago, and the game was super close. They needed a, a nice long field goal for the Vikings to get the job done against the, the Giants there. James, I feel, will continue to just garner some looks from Daniel Jones. They're looking for receivers that, you know, can have good games and can have make some nice catches for them. The pass defense, Vikings, second worst in the league. Seven targets last week, 11-5-9 previous four weeks he's involved he can get you touchdowns as well he has at least one touchdown in uh two out of his last four games and make it in four out of his last seven games so i like the over 50 and a half on richie james for our next prop we are going over to um passing rushing and receiving touchdowns we have daniel jones at one and a half today i like the over on him if he can run it in at times, we've seen him put up over 700 yards on the ground this year. You get his chances to throw a passing touchdown, which would be nice. Uh, and I think this game will be 
pretty decently high scoring. I mean, nothing crazy, but uh, he's able to just get some touchdowns. He had two rushing touchdowns against the the Colts um, back on January the 1st. He just had one against the, the Vikings, but he did throw for over 330 yards in that game. It was probably due for another one. You know, on the season, he's has two, four, five, six, seven rushing touchdowns to go along with. You know, most of the time, he's throwing at least one passing touchdown a game. So I do like his chances to go up for two in what should be a good matchup against the, the Vikings. Their defense is terrible against the pass, at least. And against the rush, they are still bottom third. So in a dome... Good environment. Should see some decent scoring. I like the over on Daniel Jones. Next, we're going over to targets. And in this one, we are taking a Buffalo player. Taking Gabe Davis over six targets against the the Dolphins. This game could be over by halftime. But then again, we all saw what happened against the Jacksonville Jaguars last night. Against uh, them and the Chargers. But in in reality... The Bills, they should just pound on this uh, undermanned Miami team playing their third their third string quarterback. Gabe Davis, been right around this number for almost every single game this year, if not well over that number. He lines up, plays almost every snap on the outside along with Stephon Diggs. Go back to his previous games, going back from before the, the Patriots game. A five-target game against the Lions, which was low. Then got 7, 10, 5, 7, 6, 6. Uh, so it could be a push. It could be a hit. Also could be one that he just misses. But what should be a spot where Josh Allen and company, they just pile up the points. I like his chances to go for over at least 6 targets. So that is the 5th prop of the day. And then for the final prop, we're going over to a rushing yards player. And we are taking Saquon Barkley over 73.5 rushing yards today. They, the Giants, they rested all the guys last week. They had nothing to play for. They were locked into the uh, sixth seed. And Barkley got some extra time off. Maybe they'll give him some more targets. Even though the Vikings are bad against the pass, they're still pretty bad against the rush. 20th this year in the NFL. At 84 against them uh, when they just met a few weeks ago. He's probably going to flirt with at least 80, if not more, I'd say. You could take his... Rushing and receiving, but some games his receiving will be like under 10. So I feel like he probably will have some targets today and probably will get you over. But I just like him to probably get around 20 carries. They've been limiting him, his workload a bit down the stretch for 12 carries against the Colts 14, 18, 9, 18, 11. But in a playoff game, I think they'll feed Barkley, especially if he gets off to some early success. So I like the over on him. And that's it for the NFL video. So taking over 61.5 receiving yards on T. Higgins. Over 24.5 receiving yards, Joe Mixon. Over 15.5 receiving yards on Richie James. Over 1.5 passing, rushing, or even if he somehow happens to catch a receiving touchdown for Daniel Jones. Over 6 targets for Gabe Davis. And over 73.5 rushing yards for Saquon Barkley. So that's the NFL one that we're looking at. And now we hop over to the NBA side. For NBA, we have one game starting at 1 o'clock, the Knicks game. I do have some interest in that one. We're going back to R.J. Barrett over 21.5 points. He was in foul trouble last game against the Wizards, so he played 32 minutes when typically he'll play 40-plus. So he lost 8 minutes or so, maybe 9 minutes. And you probably could have saw him put up a couple more baskets in those minutes. And the matchup here against the Pistons is great. They play terrible defense. Teams are putting up consistently well over 110 115, 120 against that team. And the Knicks, they should have their own, you know, with Brunson playing really well, with Barrett back, and with Randall playing his best basketball of the season. They should put up some points. I think Barrett will get his, his and get his minutes, and he even missed a bunch of free throws last week, or last game as well. Hopefully he corrects that. I'm taking the over to get us started for NBA on his prop. Next, we're going over to points, rebounds, and assists. And this is a guy I haven't played at all this year. But we're taking the over 24.5 on Ben Simmons. Last game, embarrassing. 22 against Boston. That was again with 0 points scored. Uh, he did do some good things with 13 assists, 9 rebounds. But we saw after the game Simmons talking about he has to score more. And we've heard that story from him every single time he has a 
a terrible shooting game or a terrible scoring game. However, this one, he could actually um, back it up, at least for one game against the Thunder with how bad they are. Um, interior defending, Simmons should have clear lanes to the basket. Should be able to get to the rim, get some easy dunks, some layups. He'll be able to facilitate. They should pile up the points here. A much better matchup than the last two. Tough Boston defense, tough Miami defense, and with Durant out, there's just more minutes to be had for everybody, more usage to be spread around. So even though this is all in the red, I, it's not really what you'd expect the game plan to go with. I played 26 minutes last game, but he should see probably more if he's at least contributing on offense. He can play in the mid-30s. We've seen it. So that's one Nets player that I like. Also don't even mind taking like Joe Harris over his um, points or PRA. I'm taking Kyrie Irving as well on the other side at 41 and a half. He's also all in the red, but there's no Kevin Durant. Durant played in four out of these five games. Against Boston, we saw Kyrie very aggressive as he would have expected against his former team. Didn't have a really good shooting performance, just 9 of 24. Um, so you know, he's typically a guy that will shoot over well over 45%, 50% from the floor at times, and also just shot 3 of 11 from three-point land. There is in at home in Barclays Center against the Thunders team that they've played really well this year. I mean, don't expect a blowout or anything like that. Um, so I'm expecting it to be a close game, especially without Kevin Durant there. But however, even if it is a close game, it should be a probably a high-scoring game. So I do like um, taking the over on Kyrie Irving. Looks like they just added uh, the Clippers and the Warriors props. So I have any of those. Like I guess Kawhi looks decent. If you wanted to take his Williams, he's come back down to earth a little bit, but he still has upside in some good games. Um, just without Pokeveski recently. So those are three props so far for NBA. For our fourth prop, we are going over to the Magic side, and we're taking going over to rebounds and assist. I'm taking Markel Fultz over nine and a half rebounds and assist. Now, Fultz has played really well this year. It's been definitely his best season since he's a pro. He's shooting decently, but he's really just doing a lot in the rebounding and assists have been there. The minutes are there. Uh, in close games, he's playing over 30. Now, he had 7 against Utah where he didn't play that well, but then 10. Uh, 7 against Sacramento as well. If you're looking at combined rebounds and assists, and 12, 14, 10, 13, 16. Uh, we know that the return of Cole Anthony is going to take away from some of his minutes and also the return of Jalen Suggs. But Fultz has earned his minutes. They could run some more guard lineups uh, depending on you know how the Nuggets... I mean, Murray is probable, so I expect him to play. But we'll see if they want to run some more guard lineups and maybe put like Paolo at the four, uh, match him up against Gordon. Uh, if you look at Cole Anthony, his minutes have been typically in the mid-20s. Last game, played low 20s. And Suggs, his minutes have been kind of down since he's been back. But I like Markel Fultz to get us at least 10 rebounds and assists today. And then for our final prop, and we're going with the guy that's just been red hot. It's been Sabonis for the Kings. He's been, actually for our fifth prop, we're going with Sabonis. Uh, he's been so good. Monster triple double last game against the uh, against the Rockets, I believe. Uh, in that game, he had 15 rebounds, 16 assists, so that is 31 rebounds and assists. Game before that, he gave you 23. Um, the rebounds are there. He played just 31 minutes against Orlando. Uh, he gave you 18 in that game. If he played his normal 37, you probably expect him to give hit this number as well. He's just been crashing the glass a ton. He has 14 plus rebounds. In his last two games, and if you go back further than that, he has it in uh, six out of his last eight games, 14 rebounds. He's flirted with eight plus, well, he has eight plus assists as well in five of his last six games. The matchup is great against San Antonio. They play bad defense. He should be able to get some assists. He should continue to put up high scoring points. And uh, the rebounds should match up well against Pirtle down low. Pirtle doesn't move away from the basket. So Sabonis should be able to crash the glass 
and pull down some easy boards. And then for our final prop, we're going with another uh, Knicks player today. Looking at um, sticking with rebounds and assists, you could take points, rebounds, assists on this fellow if you wanted to. But we're taking the over on Julius Randle at 15 and a half. Randle continues to just be a menace on the glass. Uh, has monster double doubles most of this year, especially in the time that Barrett missed and the couple games that Brunson missed as well. The matchup against Detroit, it's a very favorable one. They should have success being able to score. So expect Randall to maybe have a couple more assists than usual. The rebounds will be there. They've been there every single game. 16 plus rebounds in three straight games for him. He just had one assist against Washington. Typically, he's at least like three plus. Uh, four assists against the... The Pacers game before that, 5, 3, 3, 6, 6, 7, 4, 4. Typically, he's well over 3, or at least at 3. If you look at his rebounds and assists, he had 17 last game, 20, 21, uh, 14 against Toronto, 16, 22, 18, 18, 22. So going back to you know, the, basically the end of December, December 27th, he's played in... Nine games since that span, and he's only fallen short of at least 16 points and assists at one time, and that was against Toronto. So I do like the odds of him having continuing that streak against the Pistons today. And that's it for the video. That's it for NBA. Over 20.5 points, RJ Barrett over 24.5 PRA, Ben Simmons over 41.5 PRA, Kyrie Irving over 9.5 rebounds and assists, Markel Fultz. 22.5 rebounds and assists for Sabonis, and 15.5 rebounds and assists for Julius Randle. Thank you for watching. Best of luck today, and I'll catch you all next time.